Yes, sir. Nice t-shirt. Pretty cool. Are you alone or do you have some friends? Um, our, the team will come up when the uh, demo is done in eight minutes and 43 seconds. Excellent. And that will be um, one minute and 43 seconds over, but we'll let you do it anyway. <laughs> okay. I, Sounds good. Um, David Weinberger from the Harvard Innovation Lab um, and another of those with which I have a potential conflict of interest because they're great friends and uh, neighbors as well. Over to you guys. Uh, it, it's a thrill for our entire team to be here. I, I'll say it, this is an historic occasion. It's the launch of the Digital Public Library of America. So it's really amazing to be here. To be in the presence of these other uh, sprinters is my head and heart are exploding with the desire to interoperate. It's <laughs> thrilling. So the Shelf Life Collaborative is proposing um, two projects integrated. One is Library Cloud, which does the heavy lifting. It's the server underneath it, and Shelf Life, which is its far more gregarious application that runs on top of it. So Library Cloud is a metadata server. It gathers uh, metadata from institutions, libraries, collections, um, and makes it available through open APIs and as linked <coughs> open data. The aim of Library Cloud is to take everything that libraries know and make it all available to the entire web ecosystem, including other sites and services like Wikipedia that can take it up, but also to developers and innovators who build perhaps recommendation engines or library analytics or other portals like, like Shelf Life or who knows what. That's the whole point. So Library Cloud currently has about 15 million items in it, uh, which means metadata about items. We don't collect content itself, including um, circulation data anonymized from the partner libraries, which include three public libraries and um, two university libraries. We also have been gathering metadata about web objects. And we think of, of Library Cloud as a metadata amplifier that takes metadata, adds value to it, puts it out into the world, applications take it up, feed it back in. At every turn, that metadata gets more value. It gets amplified in its value, which means that the impact and value of the DPLA is also amplified. So let's take a look at Shelf Life. This, by the way, is a screencast that we did on our hotel over Wi-Fi last night. Um, but it's real stuff. You can come see it in our booth or, or of course, uh, go to our Sprint project online and um, spend as much time as you want poking at it. So our idea is that you would get to this site either by coming to dpla.org, perhaps, or maybe you go to your local library site where an embedded DPLA shelf life widget gives users at the local site access to the content of DPLA and also to many of its services. So it's a doorway to DPLA or other apps, uh, perhaps, that we interoperate with. Um, we got, this is a page you see when you click on something you're interested in. And in this case, we got here because shelf life recommended the Pluto files. Uh, because it knows about what we've been doing, and at Library Cloud has a great deal of information about the general ecology of interest. So the first thing to notice about Shelf Life is that it is a place. And we think it should be a place because we firmly believe that the DPLA is going to be a major web destination. But it's also a place because Shelf Life is not just a place that you go to look up something you know you want or to find something that you didn't know you want, which is wonderful when that happens. It's also a place to spend some time, to explore, to browse, to navigate, to contribute, to enhance, to learn, and to share with other people because it's social all the way through. So this means it has to be accessible to everyone. In fact, the DPLA has to be accessible to everyone. So we use the single most common, understandable, simple user interface around, which are shelves. Um, if you prefer uh, the now standard OPAC cover browser, we can do that too. When we have covers, there are a bunch of them there. Um, so if the object that you're looking at is a book, the width of the book indicates its page count. Actually, its length is, represents its actual length. But if it's online, then Shelf Life is a fully click and play application. So you click, in this case, we're going out to the uh, Open Library. In fact, we're using their embedded browser. So thank you, Open Library, for everything that you do. You're, you're amazing. 
If it's uh, another type of media, if it's uh, a video, same deal. You click on it, it's click and play, and you can watch it. And the same for uh, audio and the same for web pages. We have 50,000 Wikipedia pages about books, for example, that you can click on. So that's a lot of context, right? Um, these shelves are, in fact, special. They're special in three ways. And the first way is that this is our attempt to integrate five, the five collections that we have, all on one infinite bookshelf. Now, you can facet these back into their original collections, because browsing by collection is a particularly useful thing to do. But with Shelf Life, you can also facet them so that you see all and only the contents of your local library. We think this is a pretty interesting way of combining the interests of the DPLA and local libraries. Second way this is special is that the depth of the color blue indicates community relevance, or what we call shelf rank, which we calculate based upon user interactions with it, plus using that anonymized uh, data, circulation data that we're getting from our contributors. And the third way that this is special, the shelf, is that all items occur, all works of culture occur in a context. In fact, they occur, occur in multiple contexts. The human brain is very contextual. You know, that's what we do. And so we allow you to pivot on, say, the Pluto files to see it in multiple contexts. So one of the contexts is that which is carefully prepared by professional librarians as they categorize. So you can click on one of the categories, or any of them, and see this work with all of the other items categorized in it by professional librarians. But we also want to combine that wisdom of, of libraries with the wisdom of users as well. So you can see it in the context of what other users have tagged or how they've recommended works to bring them out of the long tail. You can also create, uh, users can create collections. And our collections are very simple, it's dead easy to do. You just select some objects, you say make a collection, you add it to an existing one, or you create a new one. Very, very simple, straightforward, and powerful and useful, we think. But if you notice down here, it says Chicago Starry Nights. That is, in fact, an Extra Muros collection. It was created by them, and when you click on it, it will take you to Extra Muros, launch it, and then you can use their beautiful, beautiful browser. So we provide a lot of context with Shelf Life. That's what it's about. But the context for works is not just other works. The context is people as well. And so shel Shelf Life is social all the way through, social, social, social. So you can, for example, you can rate it, you can uh, drop in some stars, you can like it, you can follow it. And a following establishes a longer term relationship with the object so that you get notified when, for example, there are new reviews or the author has published a new work or um, a discussion you are in has been added to or maybe Neil deGrasse Tyson is gonna show up at your local library and do a book chat. So um, these are all ways in which we have emphasized the social. We think that's hugely important. There's one more way here, though. These balloons on the right indicate that there's been some social activity around the object. You click, we drop you in immediately in place where you can comment, read, uh, start up a new topic. And we've been thinking, just as a possibility, that perhaps comments from librarians ought to be highlighted. Because you, we want to make sure that we gather as much of what libraries know and as much as users, crowds, communities know as well, and make it all available. So um, there's much, much more. This is just a little taste. We encourage you to come to our booth or go online to see the whole thing. But we hope that it gives you a sense of where we're going with this. This uh, shelf life, library cloud are real, they work, they scale, but this is just the beginning of figuring out what this vision is. And that's figuring out that vision is something that we have to do together and we would love to do together with Sprint partners, with everybody here. But the real opportunity, we think, for the DPLA is not simply to connect people to work. So that's hugely, that's revolutionary, that's amazing. That will change the world. But culture doesn't consist of people interacting with works. The real opportunity, we think, for the DPLA is to connect people to people through works. Because that's how you create culture. That's how it is created. That's how it grows. That's how it's enhanced. That's how it enters our lives. That's how culture comes to matter to us. And we think that is fully within the mission and the hope that we've heard today of the Digital Public Library of America. Thank you. And where's our team? Come on up. So 
uh, our team is, uh, is joining us. As they come down, yes, a question up here. Nice. Go, please, shoot. Okay, great. Let's um, have a seat. Hi, my name is Laura Parsons, and my question is, uh, obviously you're going to gather a lot of user data using this. I'm wondering what your plans would be for that. Uh, which aspect of plans? What we're going to do with it, privacy issues? Um, uh, yes, both of those things. <laughs> um, there are plenty of things to do with it. Um, you can, we have all seen examples, know of examples, of sites on the web that do amazing things with um, uh, knowing what users are doing, opt in, opt in. Let me say that again. Opt in um, <laughs> from library thing. Even uh, Amazon does amazing things with it as well. But you know, there's lots of reader sites that do things as well. Ag uh, obviously, Amazon is not an opt in example. In terms of the policy, that we think is determined by the DPLA. We tend towards uh, opting in. We default to protecting user privacy. Any of the circulation data that what we take into Library Cloud, for example, is entirely anonymized, no identifiers, date stamp is only to a day, um, the, the uh, IDs are entirely randomized. So, but the policy is up to the DPLA. Good hard questions buried there, though. David? Other questions? <laughs> right. Suggestion. Yes. Um, because library thing knows a huge library thing, which we love and who is one of our partners. Uh, first of all, buying is an interesting proposition, but leave that aside. Library thing, who, which we love, many of us are users here, I'm sure, knows a huge amount what use about what users know, what their preferences are, what they're saying. How, and in fact, we're getting social. We have social metadata from from them already. So, for example. In Library Cloud, uh, we know how many times a work ha is mentioned in the Library Cloud discussion. Not who, but just how many times. That's really interesting. Library Cloud, for all of its wonderfulness, doesn't know what libraries know. It knows what readers know, and it's fabulous at that. But we want to make sure that none of the wisdom or the metadata of libraries is left behind. That's great. Zach. Um, great work. It's incredible. It's amazing. Well, very well done. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. And, I mean, I'm working on something similar, and I had one suggestion for you, which is consider integrating social ranking with everything. I know you have a recommendation um, with stars and things like that, um, but for comments, and I like your idea of giving special emphasis to librarians' comments, um, and you could do something where you um, you allow readers to rank up um, the best comments so that you're only exposed yeah. to, you know, the highest quality things. I mean, one of the problems with the internet is so chaotic and almost too democratic. And so DPLA, this effort, we need to figure out a way to balance democracy with a kind of curation, which librarians are best at. Yeah, so. uh, it's a wonderful question, a huge set of possibilities. This is a, a, a problem that's been addressed by lots of different sorts of thinking. And the, the key thing, I think, is to remember that, uh, maybe remember is the wrong word, because they didn't say, this is an open system. and especially with Library Cloud, if you want a, for example, a different uh, recommendation engine, you don't like the way you, li you have different preferences, wonderful. That is the best thing ever. Fabulous. Well, you guys are wonderful, and thank you. I know this was a huge team effort, as all of them were, so please join me in thanking the whole team.